diverticulitis is the subject of today's food for thought. My name is Jodie Bunting and this is our daily live health tip to help you become healthy. So today I want to talk about this and this is a uh, digestional issue that a lot of older, um, maybe not older, but more mature ladies suffer from and basically it's an issue with your digestive system uh, and basically it's a bit of like a leaky gut sort of syndrome uh, and basically it's your, your body giving up, like not being able to cope anymore with uh, foods that are taking a lot of processing and also a lot of things that are highly processed. Morning Tina, welcome to our live video. Now the reason I'm so particularly um, interested in this subject is because my grandmother had this issue, my mum has currently got this issue and as you know um, a lot of people do get things that their parents get and their grandparents get and not necessarily because of genetics uh, diamond is waving it's more to do with the fact that we follow the lifestyles of our parents so for instance as I always say uh, my grandma used to love cakes my mum also loves cakes I love cakes um, so I would say it's not it's a little bit to do with genetics, maybe, uh, but it's more to do with the fact that we generally follow the same lifestyle. Uh, and Tina's saying uh, your dad had it as well. Yeah, it's not exclusively for women, uh, but it's just generally um, ladies over middle age do tend to get it. Uh, now, the picture on the front doesn't look particularly appetising, uh, but this is one of the things that you should be eating if you uh, have it. Now, the strange thing about this diet is when you are going through the symptoms, you have one diet and then when you have not got any symptoms, you have the complete opposite diet. So it's really confusing um, and this is why it is good to get a book with a specific plan because obviously it will uh, tell you exactly what to eat compared to your symptoms as well. So what I've done here is just show, I've just bookmarked a couple of things to show you, um, including there's a nice diagram in here to show exactly what it is. So this is your colon and this is the disease. So you can see basically it's little uh, nodules on the edge there, uh, which is basically your digestive system, your colon giving up and things seeping into your other or outside the digestive system. And as you know, if you think about things that shouldn't be in your bloodstream, shouldn't be in other parts of your body, it's never a good thing, guys. So this is why it's so important to work with your digestive system because if it's not working and it is leaking to other areas of your body, um, then it's not good for so many reasons. So the first part of the diet, we're going to look at stage one, which is um, flare-ups. So the biggest issue is diarrhea. So your body just giving up on your digestive system and it just gets rid of everything. So this is where you have to go on a clear fluid diet. Uh, so eat um, bone juice, clear fat-free broth. So that's, so that's another important thing. During a flare-up, you should not eat any fat. Uh, coffee or tea with no milk products or cream at, so no dairy. Uh, Gluten-free pulp juice, uh, or sorry, uh, gluten pulp free juice. So basically, it's got to be, if you have any fruit juice, it's got to be without the pulp. So if you think about what pulp is and what fibre is, it takes a lot of digesting. So this is why it's so important that you have none of that. Uh, also, stay, uh, also, you can have... Uh, drinks, sports drinks, and um, it does say soda here as well. Um, now, obviously, it's not saying that for health benefits. It's saying that these foods are okay because it's really limited when you do have a flare-up. So these are the things to avoid uh, during a flare-up, and they are any solid foods. So really, really important, guys. Anything that is going to be take your body time to digest or difficulty to digest then it's not going to do it for instance remember what people say about celery celery is a non-food because the amount of time it takes your body to 
break it down and digest it, there's literally no calories there. So celery is a great example of what you should not be eating during a flare-up of a diverticulitis uh, because it takes your body a lot to process. Uh, the next one's condiments of any kind, so any sort of salt or sugar, uh, fruit skins, seeds or pulp, milk or milk alternatives, peanuts, smoothies or yogurt drinks. So those are the things that you do need to avoid. And as you can see, one of the biggest things there is dairy. Uh, so again, dairy uh, is, is quite substantial for your digestive system to break down. Right, so after a flare-up, so this is called the low residue foods. So this is basically not like what we just had earlier, but this is like building back up your gut, things that your digestive system can process but isn't really um, going to be impossible to do. So eat this. Asparagus tips cooked, so that's really important, cooked vegetables. Bananas, beetroot, cooked, butter, uh, melon, carrots, cooked, aubergines, cooked, eggs, fish, green onions, cooked. I think they just mean onions opposed to red onions. Uh, melon, uh, seedless jam. So again, that's really important because the seeds obviously do get stuck in your digestive system. Uh, mayonnaise, meal replacement nutritional drink. So this is where uh, protein shakes come in. Hi, Vanessa. Uh, mushrooms, which are cooked. Oils, peaches, which are peeled and cooked. Uh, pears, peeled and cooked. So again, that's really important, guys. So any sort of fruit um, that is quite substantial, hard for your body to digest, it's definitely recommending that they are cooked. Uh, peas cooked, potatoes peeled and mashed, so again no skins uh, after a flare-up, poultry is fine, refined white products, so I will repeat, if you have diverticulitis and uh, this is after a flare-up, it is recommending white bread, white rice, white, 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 and the reason is fibre is great. However, if you have an impaired digestive system, fibre is not good because it will literally be clogging everything up in a bad way. So again, this is for a short time uh, when you have limited foods available. This is where uh, the book only recommends white products. So refined cereals, Rice Krispies, Cheerios, Corn Flakes, Instant Oatmeal, and cream of wheat. I don't know what cream of wheat is. But instant oatmeal, for instance, is basically ready break opposed to oat flakes. So the big oats, no, you've got to have the ready break. Uh, salad dressing of any type is fine. Smooth peanut butter, so any sort of butters which are crunchy are a no-no. Spinach cooked, squash peeled and well cooked, sweet potatoes peeled and well cooked, watermelon uh, and yoghurt drink. So that is the low residue diet. Avoid. So these are the things that you need to avoid after a flare-up. Those These are avocado, beans, berries with seeds, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, cherries, chickpeas, corn, crunchy nut butters, dried fruit, fried fruits, fruit and seed skins, uh, grapefruit, raw, kale, kiwi, lentil, mango, onions, oranges, pickles, pineapple, popcorn, raw vegetables of any kind, red meat. That's a really important one, guys. So again, uh, I talk a lot about eating red meat, liver, things that will make you full. If you have this disease, that's really bad for you guys because obviously anything that's going to fill up and clog up your digestive system to make you feel full is also going to give you a negative effect. String beans, whole nuts or seeds, whole grain or whole wheat cereals, bread, pasta, rice, crackers or bagels. Uh, for anybody who has had this or have had a um, investigation to see whether you've got this, it does include a camera going up your bottom, guys. So just bear in mind if you uh, are being investigated for this at the moment, 
um, then it's really important, guys, to have it obviously um, researched correctly. Right, so this is the important one, guys, and this is the one that I'm on. So I never want this disease, and I'm sure most of you out there also never want this disease. So this is flare-up prevention, and this is all about high-fibre foods. So if you've got it and you haven't had a flare-up, i.e. you haven't had um, uh, toilet issues, uh, then this is what you should be eating. Avocados, barley, beans berries, broccoli, brown rice, bulgur wheat, cauliflower, cereals, chia seeds, uh, chickpeas, crunchy nut butters, flaxseed, hemp seeds, kiwi, lentil, pear, raw vegetables, whole grain, whole grain pasta, bread, crackers and bran cereal, wild rice, so you can see there, it's like the total opposite of what I've just read out. So it's really important that you're listening to your body. You understand what is being caused by the disease and what is being caused by food. And you literally have to have one cupboard ready for that and another cupboard ready for the other days. Um, and what you want to avoid on your high fibre diet is refined white flour, and white rice products and still red meat guys that's really important so if you have got diverticulitis whether you're going through the issue or you're trying to build up your gut and make sure that you you haven't got any more flare-ups it's really important to avoid red meat uh, my mum in particular whenever she has bolognese spaghetti bolognese She's in that loo straight away. So <laughs> it's really it's really important to listen to your body and you will start to find certain red meats just literally leave your body within seconds. Um, and it says here, there is a note, uh, though you are still allowed to eat fish and poultry on the high fibre diet, there is non-high fibre proteins. They are not included in this chart. Okay, so this book has got lots more information in there. Um, and as you can see, by the way, I read, read out that list. It's actually just a general healthy eating diet to have a high fiber diet. Um, and then in this book in particular, uh, there is a lot of um, meal examples. So how you could um, put things together. Um, there's also some recipes as well. And it's got the full it's also got some shopping lists as well. It's also got the full three plans as well. So during an incident, after an incident, and building up the fibre so you don't have any more incidents. Uh, so if you do know anybody who has got this disease, uh, I would really recommend this book. Uh, I've done a lot of research on a lot of these books and this seems to be the best one out there um, just because it's got things like the shopping list. It's very practical. Uh, and although the picture on the front doesn't look very appetising, I suppose it's OK. Uh, it is kind of a bone broth <laughs> soup, that's why. Uh, but that's it from me for today, guys. Uh, there is a link to buy this book. So if you would like to uh, have this book or, or gift it to anybody, uh, who you know has got this disease, uh, it will be very helpful for them. That's it for me today. Join me for another live video tomorrow. This has been Jody's Food for Thought.